Okay, so today I'm going to print the Phoenix pendant I designed and modeled in Blender last week. Uh, check the videos, they are pretty cool. And before you print, you might want to prepare your file. Check that the booleans are all right, that you have all the objects clean as you want. Check the quality, check that every piece is of the correct thickness. Just check that your model is clean and well about the modifiers you don't have to apply them you can export an stl from blender and during the export blender is going to apply the modifiers but also beware that maybe you will let something unchecked and it might make you a problem after so in this occasion because i have a lot of components I already transformed everything into a mesh. I applied the modifiers. I made some cuts where I want some pieces to join later uh, after casting in metal, in silver or in gold, I don't know uh, yet. Select everything. Check that it's all right. File, export, STL. So obviously I already made the export. Here is something very important, the selection only option. Turn that on, check this selection, because if you don't, it's going to export the entire scene to your STL file. It's a lot of fun, but it's not what you want. Okay, then export and everything is going to be all right. Okay, now, so as you can see, I separated the model between different parts. This is the back decoration. It goes inside under the main stone. And I also applied all the modifiers and made it into a mesh. Like I said, it's not necessary to transform your curves with bevel into meshes. It's not necessary to apply the modifiers. When you select an object, even if it's a curve with a bevel, by example, which is not a mesh in that case, Anyway, if you go to export STL, you have the apply modifiers option, but also the curve geometry is going to be exported into a mesh because the STL is in mesh format. Anyway, so you don't have to do that, but I strongly advise you to check your meshes, especially when you're a beginner, but anyway, a professional checks his models prior exporting, after exporting, and during printing. <laughs> so anyway, check your meshes before export and you will be a lot happier, believe me. So this is the third part. Remember, this one goes on top of the main stone. So it's separated because obviously it goes over the stone and I can't solder that piece in this design the central stone is very probably going to be an amber which is a natural resin solidified millions of years ago the mexican amber is very famous and one of the prettiest one in the world so that's part of the project and obviously amber does not withstand not even 100 degrees and so I can't solder next to it, but I want this decoration to be on top of it. So what I did is that I added some entry points and made the Boolean so I can fix that part afterwards without using fire and soldering techniques. So that's why. Previous to exporting to STL, you must think about, of course, the printing process, because remember that printing is in layer. And then also, obviously, think about the casting process and the manufacturing process. And that's where and why I always say to be a jewelry designer, you must be a jeweler first. Because if you have never manufactured jewelry, all I talk about now, you will not understand at all. It's like, 
Why do you need that? Why you can't solder? But surely you can solder next to a gemstone. And blah, 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 and blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. First, you need to learn. And to learn, you must know that you don't know. So anyway, as there are good teachers, good masters, there are good students. There are bad teachers, bad masters, and there are bad students. Um, obviously, it's always very hard to know at the beginning of the learning process who is the good student, who is the bad student, who is the good teacher, who is the bad teacher. Generally, the good student feels and knows that he has a good teacher. It's also about feelings. And that works also for a teacher. The teacher feels that he has a good student because the mood, the mindset of the person is very important for learning. Okay, now remember, every STL file should go through a doctor, an STL doctor. There are many free ones, online ones. So that's not a problem anymore. Go to the hospital here. Some models come out with no issue at all, but it's rarely the case. And it has to do with the quality of your modeling, but it's not because you have issues in the hospital, in the STL doctor, that you're not a good modeler. You can be some of the best modeler around or even in the world. Some of your files or even many of your files are going to come out with some geometry problems that need to be repaired by an STL doctor. That's why we have these programs. So don't forget that you need one. You need this process to be totally sure that your STL is print ready. Now, there are some printers who have integrated doctors in their print softwares. But anyway, I would not recommend importing directly your STL to your printer software. It's not a good practice. Check the STL first, repair it first, so you know my STL is print ready. All right, apply repair. Yes. All right, so now you can see the warning is gone. This STL is repaired, print ready. All the details are in pristine. You still need to export the part, obviously, to save as a new file or overwrite the damage one. Yes, still some things to repair. Repair this, export, and now the SL doctor process is complete. Obviously, repeat the process for each part you need to print. Like I said, every part needs to be checked and repaired. This is the third and last part. Doctor, automatic repair, execute. There it goes. Apply repair, yes. The warning is gone. So it needs to be done. This went down easy, but you will have problems. Someday you'll find an STL that you can't repair. And that's why there are professional technician professionals who only work in 3D printing. Obviously, the STL is problem of the modeler, of the designer. But anyway, there are many things you need to know also on the real 3D printing side, working with the printing materials. I use resin almost all the time, but there are many, and each day there are more materials available for printing. It's amazing, by the way. It's an amazing field. I've been printing for many, many years, so I do know a lot about the technology behind 3D printing. But nonetheless, I'm still a designer and a jeweler first. 
and also I work more on the artistic side. But as any good artist, you must know the technical side. And the more you know about the technical side, also the better you get as an artist. Many people want to ignore that. They call that talent. They want to call that talent. It's called ignorance. Don't be ignorant. Know your tools. Know your technologies. Master them. And then become an artist. Next, you need to go to your printer software. Mine is the Hallow Box. So, import model. Go check your files. Find your STL file. And let's import import your file and well then there are many questions about orientations supports and all of that i'm going to rotate it very slightly on the x-axis some 10 degrees maybe more maybe less um the rule here is basically that you should avoid big flat surfaces for your resin printers. So obviously the rotation is going to affect the printing time. Always remember that for printers using the DLP printing technology, it's the height that's going to make the entire printing time. The higher the model, the more time it takes. The surface does not matter at all. If you're using a laser resin printer, the surface is going to make the time, okay? As basic rules. But also remember that for DLP technology printers, so always remember that the printer must rise each layer each layer must stick to the printing base so depending the size and the design some layers might not stick properly and you might have a failed print it much depends on the supports so here also before i print i'm going to move the design a bit Okay, I'm going to move it a bit to the right and to the back or to the front. Also, I want to avoid to have such a design totally center to the printer. Because also, if I always print in the center, it's not good for the screen of the printer. Okay, now I can already check for the supports. I'm going to use very small tips because this is a very detailed print. Well, the base is pretty flat, but I'm going to have supports on the details. It's perfect to print from the bottom up because my bottom part has not that many details. So I want the supports on the back to avoid damages or to have to retouch anything after the print. The height can be a lot lower and the raft size can be smaller here. Now I'm going to have a look at the automated supports and I'm going to make an overview. Okay, this is pretty good. Obviously I need to edit. And uh, especially the edges or the corners, I'm going to reinforce, I'm going to remove doubled supports obviously so basic rule is that edges corners tips need support so big surfaces should have supports obviously it depends the design the orientations you'll learn by failing a lot of prints but that's the fun of 3d printing the more you print the more you'll understand obviously you can read some books also or check in the forums to see what failures your fellow artists faces. But also it depends on the technology of your machine. Okay, so also what you need to know 
you can always favor the quality or the speed of the print. Generally, the quality comes from the orientation of your print, and generally the highest quality comes from the slowest orientation. And, uh, well, you'll choose. You'll know when you want to print fast, depending on what you need, but you might find some issues depending on the orientation and the quality of the details. So know that everybody has their own preferences and theories and experiences about 3D printing. Like I already said, it depends a lot on your printer and the material of the print, resin printing, or plastic printing, metal printing. Every technology has some issues that make it special to use. So you'll learn by practicing. The more you print, the more you'll know. So know your technology, know your software, know your printer, and enjoy this new line of work. Too many people think that 3D printing is just push a button and you'll be fine. That's not true at all, obviously. Like too many people think that 3D modeling is just push a button and you'll be fine. You will do an artwork in no time. Anybody can do that. Well, guess what? Not anybody can really 3D model. Right now, obviously, I need to import all the other parts and do the same work for these parts separately. I'm going to move this a bit closer to the other one so the bases can touch. Also, this part I'm going to entirely flip. Let's go at 185. Okay, 185 like that because I want the part that goes outside, which is the visible part of the piece, or the most visible part. Obviously, I don't want the support to be on that side. And now let's go with the supports, very small supports also, or smaller supports. Depends on the detail of the design, depends on a lot of things. Generate supports. Undo, this is too high, I don't need it that high. So the raft can be lower and also the distance can be a bit smaller here. Now let's go under and edit to have a look. It's generally the most boring part of the process, but obviously it's technically very important. You should never really rely completely on the fully automated systems. They do make mistakes and uh, you can very easily optimize them by hand. I have used different softwares for supports uh, using different printers and in any case the fully automated support is never fully optimized and there are mistakes. Some people might not agree but then you might not be printing very interesting designs, honestly. <laughs> Third and last part. Let's have a look. Okay, and also some supports then become part of the casting process. Generally, we remove all the supports. You might also want to use the supports in your casting strategy. That's also a lot more thinking work to do. And it depends also a lot on who's making the casting. And because I'm not making the casting, I send the casting to someone else. I generally don't use the supports in the casting strategy. But you should know that you can very well do that. So obviously this is the most delicate part. It's very delicate, but we should have no problems with the printing of these designs. Okay, so now the supports are complete. We need slicing. That's where the quality of your printer makes a lot of difference. The quality of the printer software makes a lot of difference because generally the slicing process 
is very easy for good printers. It's one of the rare occasions where you just click a button and it makes the slicing and then you can save your file for 3D printing. Okay, here the most important option is the layer height or thickness. I'm going to go at 0.03, which is 30 microns, which is already very good for jewelry printing and slice. The software is making the slice. It's generally very fast. It's processing the slicing preview. And I'm going to export to local. OK. And save the file Phoenix print. Save. Save finish. Close. I'm ready to go to the printer. Okay, great. So we have with the printer, we just need to plug in the USB right there. Go to file. The file shows on the screen. It copies the file to the printer. Obviously check that the design is correctly displayed, that it's the correct file and design. And also very important, check the printing time. Here we have 1 hour 51 minutes, which is very good. Design is pretty big, but like I said, it's not too high. And we're ready to start. Obviously the printer is already set with the resin in the tank. And we can start. Everything starts very slowly, but that's majestuous. The platform goes down very slowly till it reaches the film and the light will be projected layer by layer. Okay, so now we just have to wait. Many people say that you should stay and watch your printer the entire time. If you're properly trained, made a proper setting, you can very comfortably go do something else and not worry at all. A few hours later. Alright, so here we are, one hour and 51 minutes later, the 3D print is ready. So here's the printer, fresh after finishing the print, the print hanging from the print base. We can't see much, but we can already recognize some of the designs. All right, so now I remove the base from the printer. We can see the fresh prints covered in resin, but we can already see the success of the print. This looks gorgeous, but you should never call victory too soon as there might be some hidden damages and well that's when we need to print again so now the resins must be washed in alcohol and then cured <laughs> great now i'm going to cut the supports it's a delicate job obviously some hate to do this some other love this process presenting the tweezers some nail tweezers obviously they're the best 